Hey guys, today I wanted to talk to you about the tire pressure monitoring system that is federally mandated on 2009 and newer vehicles. This is passenger light duty trucks and cars and we're starting to see a lot of weird faults on them. Weird faults that many, many independent shops, even Ford dealers, may be misdiagnosing because it is so weird and intermittent. And I want to go over a couple of them in case you're fighting them yourself or you got a shop that just can't figure it out. So the way the system works is there's either a valve mounted uh, tire pressure sensor or a banded tire pressure sensor inside each wheel. And it broadcasts the tire pressure uh, back to the module uh, from each wheel. And the way it wakes up to actually send that signal out is by you going down the road and you, the wheel spins round and round and round, opens a reed switch, and it turns it on and it'll start broadcasting the tire pressure every 30 seconds as long as you're above a certain mile per hour. So it's constantly looking for it. The module is constantly looking for it. And if it's not getting that reading, it will throw a, a fault code for one or more uh, tire pressure sensors not reading correctly. And there's also another code, and this is the code I'm going to be talking about, I believe it's a 2278A, and that's where the module does not see all four of them for 20 minutes or more. That's a long time to see the fault. So either there's all four of them wrong, that are bad, unlikely, the module's bad, possibly, or there's interference. And the way they talk to them is through radio frequency. So just like any other radio frequency device, radio stations, whatever, they can get interference. And they can get enough interference that it overpowers a signal or blocks a signal so that module over there cannot receive the tire pressure. Now the most common causes for this is is actual interference within the vehicle. And I'm talking from like power inverters or little chargers, cheapy uh, chargers, for the kids game systems all kinds of like accessories non OEM stuff and the one I got example I got here and the biggest offender of this because it's most common in just about all cars is cell phone chargers cheapy cell phone chargers I mean, really cheap ones like this one and you can just see from the plastic on here you can just tell it's a really cheapy type uh, uh, cell phone charger this one probably only costs like two dollars it's a FIFO brand whatever brand that is and uh, this one was actually causing interference on a 2012 Escape and the customer did not believe us that it could be interference from within the vehicle causing a sensor fault, he wanted a warranty, blah blah then he took this in his rental car we gave him which was like a 09 or 2010 uh, uh, Focus which had the tire pressure monitoring system took this with, took the car for the day and guess what same thing came out as dash after a while, tire pressure sensor fault. And it's all because these uh, these cheaper um, charging devices or inverters and all that stuff like I'm saying, uh, they can provide a lot of interference. They just don't have the, the guts inside of there for the shielding and the high quality components. So they just put out all this interference and that signal never gets to that module and it doesn't see all four of them. Now also, um, which I understand, I've seen this on uh, police package vehicles. I had a 2013 Ford Explorer police package and it had all the radios in, it was already done up and they had a problem with the tire pressure monitoring system also and that one, I went around, first thing you do usually is retrain them, see which, which one's not responding to the tool and that one I couldn't train the rear ones. Makes sense, the rear ones are furthest away from the module up front. And I, and I went ahead and I turned all the radios off, turned everything off, pulled all the fuses, and I was able to train all of them. Now, that I understand because there's so many radios and interference that it's going to happen, but you got to realize, even from something this small, made this crappy, I guess you could say, it's going to provide all that interference. Now, the way that you're going to be able to tell that it's a tire pressure sensor fault, and not just a low tire, is in the cluster here on the high series of course it's just gonna say tire pressure sensor fault but on the low series all he has is that little icon so upon startup of the car it's gonna flash and that's how you know there's an actual fault and it's not just a low tire so I just wanna get this out there because a lot of people 
and, and are getting really frustrated with these and shops maybe not be able to diagnose them. Even dealers may not be able to diagnose them because they don't see them too often. And the other thing is, if you drop the car off for the day and then you take this with you, they're really not gonna be able to diagnose it. So before you take it to a shop, get all this stuff out of the vehicle and, and then go for a drive, do a key cycle, go for a drive and the sensors will automatically wake up and broadcast after 20, 30 miles an hour and they'll broadcast and then they'll send it to the actual control module and the control module will see it and it will automatically clear that fault in the message center and you should be good to go. You'll know at that point that it was just your interior uh, electronics causing all these problems and that can save you a lot of hassle.